I call members to order the item first. On, first item on our agenda is questions to the First Minister. And the first question is from Heaven David. Will the First Minister make a statement on Welsh Government funding for major infrastructure projects? Yes, the Wales Infrastructure Investment Plan sets out plans to invest over £6.5 billion in infrastructure across Wales over the remainder of the current Assembly term. That includes our flagship infrastructure projects such as investment in 20,000 affordable homes and the South Wales Metro. Thank you, First Minister. In um, spring 2017, the Cabinet Secretary for Finance announced well, the Welsh Government's intention to undertake three major infrastructure schemes. Um, using the mutual investment model um, for this year. Um, and according to the Welsh Government um, information, they've com uh, combined capital value, those three projects, of uh, one billion. Um, the Welsh Government stated that uh, the mutual investment model, or MIM, um, will see private partners build um, and maintain public assets. In return, Welsh Government will pay a fee to the private partner, which will cover the cost of construction, maintenance and financing the project. And at the end of the project, it will be transferred into public ownership. So can I ask the First Minister, would he outline the key differences between MIM um, and PFI and identify whether other schemes um, will be used uh, using the MIM model um, in the future during this Assembly term? Well, the uh, difference is that MIM has value for money among its core objectives. It won't be used to finance soft services, such as cleaning and catering, which led to expensive and inflexible contracts in the historic PFI model, nor will it be used to finance capital equipment. Uh, we'll invest a small amount of risk capital in each scheme, ensuring that the public sector participates in any return on investment. So it's a different model to uh, PFI. I can say that a public interest director will be appointed by a government to manage the public shareholdings and to promote the public interest more widely, and that post will ensure there is transparency about costs and the performance of private partners. Nick Ramsey. Our First Minister, broadband is a key part of our economic infrastructure within Wales. The UK Government has established the uh, local full fibre network challenge fund in order to bring on the next generation of digital infrastructure and to help local led projects leverage commercial investment into uh, the full fiber uh, future the gold standard of reliability in broadband uh, will you join me in welcoming the news that uh, monmouthshire and neighboring local authorities torbine newport as part of the city region have successfully bid in to this scheme and can you tell us how the Welsh Government's own plans for developing broadband infrastructure in Wales will dovetail into uh, the success of areas uh, like Monmouthshire, Torvine uh, and South East Wales to make sure that we capitalise on this. These are the first areas of the UK to benefit from this, uh, from this new development. How is the Welsh Government going to make the most of it? Well, we are involved as a Government with uh, the projects that he has uh, mentioned and it builds of course on Superfast Cymru which has been hugely uh, successful in bringing uh, broadband to many communities that would otherwise not be served uh, with broadband if it was left to the, uh, to the market because of, uh, of their size. So we look to work with the UK Government to deliver the best digital outcomes for all our communities. Adam Price. Um, given the, the current uh, level of interest rates and, and annuity rates, um, uh, a, a debt service liability of about £150 million um, um, over the course of a, a 30 years would, would un unlock about 2.5 billion using the, the kind of um, innovative financing uh, um, method like the MIM that the uh, First Minister re referred to. Do you think that represents uh, value for money? And, and if it does, shouldn't we be much more ambitious in terms of the scale of the capital investment programme to maximise this historic opportunity of low interest rates? I'm with him on ambition, but it has to be tempered, of course, with, uh, with prudence. So I can say, of course, that the MIM incorporates the best of the Scottish non-distributing model, optimum risk allocation, whole life costing and performance-related uh, rate-based payments, whilst ensuring that new investment is classified to the private sector, hugely important issue, of course, we have to deal with in this chamber on many times, and it's therefore genuinely additional to investment from other public uh, services. So it's a different model uh, from PFI. We will always seek to, uh, to maximise the amount of uh, funds available through the uh, scheme, but of course we also have to bear in mind the, uh, the affordability uh, of our ambition for Wales. Question, Question two, Jane Bryant. Welsh Government have to support technology companies in South East Wales? 
Our economic action plan recognises the importance of technology to future-proof and maintain the competitiveness of our economy. Our calls for action, with their focus on digitalisation, automation and innovation, will see us foster the conditions that will enable uh, technology businesses across Wales to thrive. Thank you, First Minister. On Friday, I visited Innovation Point, a digital innovation company based in Newport that helps provide expertise, knowledge and contacts to small tech firms. Uh, their annual International Digital Festival is the biggest tech event in Wales. Innovation Point has attracted many companies to Wales, work by businesses like these are vital in sustaining growth and establishing our reputation for being at the forefront of technological developments. So will the First Minister set out the steps the Welsh Government is taking to assist small and medium-sized technology firms in Newport and the region so that we can seize the opportunities to attract more investment and ensure South East Wales maintains its place as a digital hub? Well, first of all, of course, the uh, Cardiff Capital Region uh, deal will help to deliver more funding for uh, digital uh, businesses. Uh, we provided £25 million pounds of the funding to the Institute for Compound Semiconductor Technology in Cardiff, with a further £38 million pound investment with the Cardiff Capital Region. Uh, and, of course, the UK's first National Software Academy, a new National Cyber Security Academy, and, of course, as uh, the member said, Innovation uh, Point. Uh, in 2017, we announced we would invest £100 million in the Tech Valleys programme over 10 years to support the creation of more than 1,500 jobs. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, two months ago in May, the Cabinet Secretary confirmed we would invest an extra £25 million in the Tech Valleys programme over the next three years as part of that commitment. Mohamed Ashka. Thank you, Madam Presiding Officer. I recently visited the Alacrity Foundation in Newport, which is an educational charity with a mission to train and mentor graduates to create next generation of high-tech companies based in Wales by providing the skills and knowledge required to run a profitable technology startup. It also supports businesses by challenging its graduates to solve practical problem sources directly from companies themselves. Will the First Minister join me in congratulating Dr. Will Williams and his team and the private benefactors who helped fund this charity alongside the Welsh Government for the fantastic work they are doing in training the next generation of entrepreneurs with the skills required to run the companies that will provide the jobs we need in the future in Wales. Thank you. Yes, I would join him in, uh, in that. I think it's hugely important that uh, advice is given to individuals who have great ideas but who need advice as to how to run a business, how to be uh, entrepreneurs, uh, and uh, to be able to receive uh, that uh, advice is uh, invaluable to them. I now call the party leaders to question the First Minister, Leader of Plaid Cymru, Leanne Wood. Can you tell us which areas of Wales have the highest rates of late-stage late cancer diagnosis? <coughs> well, I mean, that's something that uh, I would have to write to the uh, member about, uh, but we do know that uh, as far as the targets are concerned uh, in Wales, our figures compare very well. Rich or poor, rural or urban, man or woman, cancer is an indiscriminate disease, yet diagnosis is anything but. Recent research by Macmillan shows that cancer diagnosis in this country remains a postcode lottery, and our poorest communities consistently face later stage diagnosis. Where stage is recorded, more than one in four people in Wales were diagnosed with cancer at its latest stage, which is stage four. This is not only unacceptable in the context of our rates being the worst of any country in the UK, it's not acceptable full stop. For some cancers, the wait between first suspecting that something is wrong and diagnosis is the longest in Europe. We all know that catching cancer early saves lives. <coughs> first Minister, you can save lives. Will you commit to setting and sticking to a 28-day cancer diagnosis target for all so that we can catch cancer early? Well, what medics tell me is that it, it can't be done for all types of cancer, that sometimes it takes longer for certain cancers to be diagnosed. Now, she makes the point that it's hugely important, for example, for people to be encouraged to present early and also, of course, for GPs to, uh, to refer people early on in the, uh, in the pathway. We know the vast majority of cancer patients in Wales start their treatment within target times. Uh, we know that the incidence of cancer continues to rise and treatment is increasing in uh, complexity. 
The number of referrals for suspected cancer requiring investigation has risen by more than 36,000 over a five-year period to around 96,000 referrals a, a year, which I think is, is at least partial good news because it means people are being uh, referred on more uh, quickly. Uh, we know, of course, that 85.5% of patients newly diagnosed with cancer via the urgent suspected cancer route started definitive treatment within the target time of 62 days, and 97% uh, of those diagnosed not via the urgent route started definitive treatment within the target time of 31 days. So you're talking about treatment, and I'm asking you about diagnosis. Um, cancer Research UK has championed it, clinicians are calling for it, England is doing it, and yet, First Minister, you continue to argue with the experts. You reject 28-day targets, not for the good of patients, but for the good of your own public relations. You won't hit those targets, and you won't meet those patients' needs. First Minister, the evidence is clear. People in poorer areas are diagnosed later. Macmillan's data shows stage 4 diagnosis in our poorest areas is up to 9% higher compared to their wealthier neighbours. You can't afford to be poor and ill in Labour's Wales. An information campaign, more ready, read, readily access to GPs and diagnosis services could turn this around. So will you commit to creating accessible cancer diagnosis services in all parts of Wales so that whether you are rich or poor, your cancer diagnosis is not left too late. Well, I mean, as somebody who uh, is married to somebody who works for Macmillan, uh, I'm lobbied on a daily basis in terms of the way cancer uh, is dealt with in Wales. And I can say there is no clinical evidence at all to suggest a 28-day target. Where does that come from? Where is the clinical evidence to say that 28 days is some kind of golden figure? Politicians love these figures, but in reality, I don't, I don't see any clinical evidence uh, for it. There are the issues... Well, there's no point shouting. If you ask the question, I'll answer the question for you now. Part of the problem is a reluctance uh, in some areas for people to come forward early, and that doesn't help. Uh, we need to make sure that all GPs are referring as quickly as possible, because access to treatment is the same for everyone. It's simply a question of encouraging people to uh, come forward as early as possible and, and for GPs to refer as quickly as possible. Uh, and that is something that is hugely important in terms of the campaigns that we have run, in terms of uh, raising awareness of different types of cancer, because we know uh, if people are asked to uh, check their symptoms, they are more likely to present early. And that's the way to make sure that more people, not just uh, are cured of cancer, but they, they live with cancer, making sure that people are aware of the different types of cancers and their symptoms. And the work that Macmillan does is exactly that. Part of their work is to raise awareness of different cancers, provide evidence to people. They will be at the Royal Welsh Show. One of the, the themes they've had at the Royal Welsh Show is uh, they have uh, dealt with skin cancer, melanoma especially, with the show that's held in the summer. And uh, they focus very, very strongly on people identifying cancer at an early stage themselves or what may be the symptoms of cancer so they can present. So then, of course, they can have a better outcome. Rana on behalf of the opposition, Paul Davis. First Minister, the report published by independent examiner Donna Ockenden last week provided a frightening picture of the delivery of services in North Wales. The damning report showed that leadership at the Health Board has been wholly inappropriate and significantly flawed since its creation, and that mental health services are chronically understaffed at a time when patient numbers and acuity was increasing. First Minister, are you ashamed of your government's management of Betsy Cadwallader yeah. University Health Board? Well, there will be a statement on this uh, further on uh, on the agenda this afternoon. What I can say is, of course, this is a difficult uh, report. Uh, the report did highlight areas of progress in the presentation of the board last week. Uh, BCU now has a different executive leadership team in place. Since 2016, a new chief executive, seven executives, including a medical director and director of nursing, and a new director of mental health have been appointed to lead on the improvements needed. A new chair will take up post uh, shortly. Uh, I know that the Cabinet Secretary has published uh, a written statement. He will, as I say, make an oral statement on the review later this afternoon, and he has been clear about he, what he expects of the Board. First Minister, you should be ashamed the way yeah, that you yeah. actually run this uh, Health Board. It'll be three years ago this summer that the Welsh Government put Betsy Cadwallader Health Board in special measures, and the Ockerden report has shown that over that period, progress has been slow and significant improvements have yet to be yeah. made. Lessons simply haven't been learnt, and people in North Wales will rightly feel anger and outrage Absolutely. at the lack of progress of the past three years 
in addressing these serious <coughs> failings. This is a health board that is only eight years old and has been in special measures for three of those years. It's your government's responsibility to run this health board. You are responsible. Yeah. Your cabinet secretary is accountable yeah. to you yeah. for the de delivery of health services in Wales. What are you doing to make sure that he sorts this mess out? And how are you, you performance managing the health secretary to make sure he improves yeah. Betsy Cadwallader yeah, 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 health yeah. board? Yeah. You clearly have no targets for improving the health board. Have you set any targets for your health secretary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I can say that Don Alkenden was commissioned by BCU in 2015 to review the governance uh, arrangements relating to the care of patients uh, in, uh, in Betsy Cadwallader. She presented her findings to the board on the 12th of July. The report runs to over 500 pages, with the executive summary alone running to 50 pages. I wonder if he's read that report. The findings are consistent with previous reports, in many cases a summary of previous years since 2009. Now, what's hugely important, now that we have that report, uh, it, we can now build on that report, as the Cabinet Secretary will uh, outline this afternoon, and now that we know what the challenges are, meet those challenges. Well, clearly your Cabinet Secretary has failed when it comes to Betsy Cadwallader Absolutely. University Health Board. The Welsh Government's record of delivering health services in North Wales speaks for itself. Absolutely. Let me give you some examples, First Minister. 93-year-old Margaret Megan Evans waited on a concrete path for more than three hours after falling and breaking her hip, and then was not seen by an emergency department doctor until almost 11 hours after help was initially summoned. 46-year-old Esther Wood waited five hours in an ambulance before being admitted to hospital where she then died. 78-year-old Neville Welton passed away following a delay in treatment because of capacity, staffing, administration errors and patient flow problems. First Minister, these are real people. Yes. Yes. Warnings that lives remain at risk have been issued by the coroner's office following deaths in hospitals no and in the past 12 months the health board received 294 new claims for either personal injury or clinical or medical negligence. There's clearly a culture of deny, defend and dismiss at the heart of Betsy Cadwallader Health Board and your government. Yes. First Minister, when will your government take responsibility for the yes. catalogue of no failures no. in care Yes. at Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board yeah. since it has been in special measures and will you now apologise yeah, to the yeah. people of North Wales yeah. for the shambles of a system that your government has presided over and for the lack of accountability in handling these services? Yeah, yeah. Well, it, it, this contrast, doesn't it, with the way his party approaches things in England where if there is an issue like Gosford, well, it's always the fault. Wales, it's yeah. always yeah. the fault. I know it's the leadership the contest, perhaps he'd like to, to me to answer the question. Please. Allow the First Minister to respond. Yes. Where all these things are brushed off towards uh, the health board, it's never the fault of the UK government. We take responsibility for what happens. We take responsibility for what happens in Betsy Cadwallader because it is in special measures and it is the report that we will use in order to create that improvement. We are diverting and putting resources into health as best we can, despite the austerity. Despite the austerity, well, they can moan about it. Despite the austerity that has been put in place by his party, if he stood up and demanded the same for Wales as his party has given to Northern Ireland, to Northern Ireland, he would have more credibility in the arguments that he puts forward. As I say, the Cabinet Secretary will make a statement on this this afternoon. It's time he and his party apologise for fleecing the people of Wales for the past eight years. Group. Leader of the UKIP Group, Caroline Jones. First Minister, the outgoing um, Auditor General for Wales has been highly critical. Allow Sorry. Caroline Jones to ask the question. Caroline Jones. Diolchered. First Minister, the outgoing Auditor General for Wales has been highly critical of the Welsh public sector's inability to adapt to reduced budgets. In evidence um, to the Public Accounts Committee, Hugh Vaughan Thomas said that the public services could be reforming for the better, um, but their only response to austerity has been cutting costs. Um, he also said that he was frustrated that devolution hasn't led to a fundamental rethink on how we deliver public services in Wales. The reality is that regardless of whomever is in power in Westminster, we will not see massive increases in public, uh, public spending because the UK is now nearly £2 trillion in debt, which equates to around 85% of GDP. 
We can't borrow our way out of this mess, so we have to spend smarter. So, First Minister, do you agree with the outgoing Auditor General that we need a radical rethink for public services? Well, we always look to, uh, to, to put in place uh, the best system for public services that, uh, uh, that we can. For example, uh, we took uh, three um, Welsh Government-sponsored bodies, turned them into one, uh, NRW. Uh, we reduced the number of bodies delivering, uh, we reduced the number of bodies delivering uh, health uh, to make sure that, that there were uh, fewer organisations that people had to uh, be in contact uh, with. But the reality is this, we have protected the Welsh Public Services budget. The local government in Wales is far better financed than is the case in England. We haven't seen the destruction of social services that is happening under a Tory government in, uh, in England. We have put resources into social care and also into health. We've also, of course, put resources into education. We have seen the cut in education funding uh, that we saw in England last week, where schools have been starved of money by a Conservative government. Why is this relevant? Because if they were in charge, they would do exactly the same in Wales. Exactly the same in Wales. We have fought against the austerity that the Welsh Conservatives have greeted in Wales, and we know what would happen to our old people, to our young people, to schools, to hospitals, to social services, if ever, God forbid, they got their hands on power. I agree with the, with the former Auditor General that austerity is the biggest challenge facing public services in Wales, coupled with the rising demand. These services are facing incredible pressure. While NHS spending has continued to rise, local authority cuts are impacting upon social care, which in turn impacts upon health care. We spend more per head on health than they do in England, yet we have to wait longer for appointments and longer for treatment. So, First Minister, your government's long-term plan for health and social care will help us prepare for future challenges. But what about now? How do we meet the challenges of today? Hugh Vaughan Thomas said that public services in Wales need to think more radically about how services are delivered, with a focus on outcomes rather than structures. So, First Minister, is your government too focused on structures as opposed to outcomes? No, because, for example, in the field of health, that would mean we were looking at yet, a, yet another reorganisation, and that's not something that would, be, uh, that would cause stability in the, uh, in the health service. It is down to resource. Uh, it's down to ensuring that we can allocate as much resource as we can to health and other public services, but it's a hugely difficult uh, task uh, against the background, backdrop of austerity that we face and what we face over the past eight years. Thank you, First Minister. Hugh Vaughan Thomas said that the Williams Commission report clearly sets out the nature of systemic uh, problems that need to be fixed. He added that he finds himself both frustrated and increasingly concerned that many clarion calls for action um, that Wales has heard over the last decade or so have not yet uh, generated the tangible changes that are now urgently needed and that we have not used devolution as an opportunity for fundamental rethinks. So, First Minister, does your government lack the will to do what is necessary to drive forward change in Wales public services, or do you truly believe that the changes proposed by the Williams Commission um, and others are unnecessary? Thank you. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's now you get policy to back what was in the Williams Commission in terms of local government reform. Uh, if that is the case, that, that's interesting. Uh, but uh, we have seen uh, a, a situation in Wales where we have seen a, 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 a development of consortia, for example, in education, which has led to far better outcomes for education than was previously the case. At one point, we had six local authorities in special measures. Uh, we had one local authority that collapsed completely uh, in, in Anglesey. We're far from, uh, from that position. So we've worked to make sure that our local authorities have become more sustainable. There are still challenges to make sure that happens uh, in, in the future. Uh, and that is where, of course, it would be interesting to, to hear other parties' views in terms of what the structure of public services should be in the future, rather than simply saying, well, we don't like this. But what are the, uh, the views of, of other parties? And you know, let's see if there is a, a consensus. We've had the parliamentary review on, on health, but a consensus in terms of how public services might be structured in the future. Question three, Neil, Question three, Neil McAvoy. Will the First Minister make a statement on traffic congestion, on tackling traffic congestion in South Wales Central? Well, uh, the Metro obviously is one uh, obvious example of how that is being uh, done. Uh, we also have a pinch points programme, uh, the improvements to public transport I've already mentioned, and supporting local authorities to address key local issues. First Minister, we all know that you are making traffic congestion worse in Cardiff rather than tackling it. Thousands of houses 
are being thrown up right now. Right now, along Clantrissant Road, for example, in the west of the city, where there's only a single carriage road. The metro is at some point in the future. You're also planning on building a motorway when you can make a decision, but that traffic will then end up in, in local roads. Now, in this region, in the city, especially in the west, along Clantrissant Road, traffic jams already go on for miles. Now, there is no metro in place, there is no public transport in place, there's no actual plan when you speak to developers. So my question is, what are constituents meant to do? And what advice do you have to those people stuck for hours and hours and hours in jams? And I would appreciate this time if you could just take just that little bit of care and actually address the question, what are my constituents supposed to do? Well, I expect, first of all, the, the issue of development is a matter of Cardiff Council, not for the Welsh Government. Secondly, we do expect uh, count, uh, councils to put in place uh, plans for sustainable transport and particularly for active travel. And I note the intention of Cardiff Council, for example, to look at five uh, cycling uh, superhighways, which I think is an excellent idea uh, for, the, uh, for the city. Uh, he is right to say uh, that we cannot uh, keep on building houses uh, without there being an active uh, transport plan that supports those developments. We can't rely on the roads in Cardiff uh, forever and a day to take the, uh, the traffic. But these are matters that have to be addressed in the course of the uh, planning process. Andrew R.T. Davis. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Uh, congestion straddles the whole of South Wales Central. Uh, just a distance from this chamber, uh, the village of Dinis Powys exists, the largest village in Wales. On the one side of it, Barry, the largest town in Wales, and the capital city falls the other side of it. For some 40 years, there's been a campaign to have a bypass built around the village of Dinis Powys, uh, and successive campaigns sadly have come to nothing. Do you identify with the issues around congestion in the village of Dinis Powys, the blight it puts on people's lives there, especially with air pollution and noise in particular, where that road passes? several schools, primary schools, I might add. And will you identify this as a top priority for the Welsh Government and work with the Vale of Morgan Council to take forward the plans that are currently being discussed? Well, this is primarily a matter, of course, of the Vale of Morgan Council, but we did award funding of 20,000 in 2016 to 17 and 80,000 in 2017 to 18 to the Council towards a study looking at the options to resolve traffic congestion in uh, Dinas uh, Powys. Uh, the uh, scope of that work was extended in April 2018. I understand the Village of Morgan Council is funding additional uh, work and then consultation on the next stage is planned for September 20, well, so this September 2018. Julie Marker. Andy Alfield. Would the First Minister agree that the Metro plans um, for two new stations in my constituency of Cardiff North, um, the Balfour Land of North, um, one of them, and the other one to go in the centre of the new build of the Valindra Cancer Centre, that these will aid traffic congestion in the city of Cardiff? Yes, I do. Uh, I think it's hugely important. I mean, it, there is no way that Cardiff uh, City Centre can plan its way uh, to, uh, out of traffic congestion simply by roads. I mean, that's self-evident, which is why, of course, we're making the investment in the, uh, the metro. And what's important about the metro is it, 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 its extendability, that in the future uh, new stations can be opened up with uh, light rail to provide uh, better alternatives than people have at the moment in terms of uh, public transport, whether it's light rail, whether it's buses, whether it's uh, heavy rail, and of course uh, the need to make it easier for people to cycle. There's no doubt in my mind that a substantial proportion of cyclists, apart from the dedicated few who I know are some in this chamber, don't feel comfortable about sharing the road with, with heavy vehicles. And so anything that can be done to make it easier for people to, to, to cycle, to, uh, to work via um, separate highways for cycles, I think is uh, something to be welcomed. Question, Pedwar, Jane. Question for Jane Hutt. Does the Minister make a statement on the Welsh Government's review of gender equality? Yes, my ambition is for the review to provide the change needed for Wales to become a world leader in women's rights and gender equality. I know the Leader of the House recently updated members on the first phase of the review, and phase two will provide a comprehensive programme of actions to take forward. Thank you, First Minister. Last week, we held the first meeting of the cross-party group on women, supported by the Women's Equality Network, a membership network of over 1,000 organisations and individuals working to advance the rights of women in all spheres of Welsh life. Uh, the Women's Equality Network delegation is presenting their UN Convention on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women report to the UN Committee this week. 
asking a wide range of questions of the UK and Welsh governments regarding gender equality. Will you agree to meet with the delegation to respond to their report, which includes calling on the Welsh Government to formally adopt <coughs> the Istanbul Convention and seed uh, oil principles to provide internationally recognised standards to make Wales the safest place in Europe to be a woman? Yes, I would be open to meet with the delegation to discuss the report. We will, of course, formally respond to the report during the UN examination on the Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women in February of next year. Um, could I suggest as well, of course, that the Leader of the House and the National Advisers who recently attended Cabinet are also involved in any meeting with the delegation. Jonathan Saunders. First Minister, your own intentions towards honing a government of equals is sadly undermined by figures which make clear that the Welsh Government's gender pay gap for your own staff has recently increased. The annual Employer Equality Report earlier this year found that the pay gap between men and women working in the Welsh Government had actually increased in 2017 from the previous year. On average, men actually earn more than women in every single pay grade, from team support to senior civil service. Men also outnumber women in each of the three highest pay grades. And the average basic full-time equivalent salary for men was more than £3,000 higher than for women. Given such a scale of inequity and unfairness, unfairness within your own government departments, do you not th now think that it is time to practice what you preach and to better seek to lead by example? In other words, First Minister, by getting your own house in order? Mm. Well, the Welsh Government gender pay gap is 8%. It is nothing to shout about, of course, but it's better than the pay gap that exists in Whitehall, which oh, is the 10%. That is dis <laughs> that is you what are on a... Earth is, what on earth is wrong? Carry on, First Minister. What on Carry earth on. is wrong with comparing the situation in Wales to the situation that is so shameful to the Conservatives in London? If I could... the, the First Minister is answering the question, please. If I could... Well... Please, will you allow the First Minister to continue Thank his you, answer? Chloe. We do recognise the current position isn't good enough. It's fair to say the majority of higher paid roles are currently filled by men, and Welsh Government is fully committed to doing everything it can to reduce the pay gap. Women hold 40% of senior civil service posts in the Welsh uh, Government. Now, of course, the pay arrangements for senior staff are not in the control of the Welsh Government. They're not devolved. But there is a commitment on our part to achieving 50-50 representation across the senior civil service by 2020. So what measures are being taken? Well, measures are being taken to attract more women into senior posts. This includes support for women who are pregnant or on maternity leave, ensuring job adverts are inclusive, offering development courses to women and having no all-male shortlists for recruitment exercises. Alongside this, the Welsh Government has signed up to Huarateg's Fair Play Employer Benchmarking Service, and that will help to review existing practices and develop the action plan for further changes. Question, Pim, clear Question five, Clear Griffith. Thank you, Llywydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on the future of Betsy Caralder University Health Board? We have set out clear expectations and milestones for Betsy Cadwalder Health Board to meet in order to drive improvements and action recommendations made in key reports during the next 18 months. A new chair has been appointed and more intensive support is being put in place to accelerate improvements to benefit the population of North Wales. And this is the response that I've been hearing over five years of asking this question to all intents and purposes and we've heard reference to another damning report which has just been published recently and it is a beast of a health board that's cert certainly the largest health board we have in Wales and perhaps the biggest public body we have in Wales but over the last three years it has been in special measures and therefore it has been directly accountable to your government directly under the purview of your cabinet secretary and therefore the buck stops directly with your government you can't deny that but tell us how many more damning reports and how many more scandals are needed before you accept that the situation as it currently exists is unsustainable and it's time for change and we now need to look again at the structures of delivering health services in north wales i don't think it's
don't think a change of structure will do anything, but what we need a change is to ensure that action is being taken on those reports. If nothing happens after the report, then the criticism would be very fair, in my opinion, and it's crucial that we understand what the challenges are before we get to those challenges. What's happening positively in Betsy Cadwallader? Well, there is a mental health strategy that's been developed with partners and users of service. There is more of a focus on quality and experience of patients. We've seen, of course, maternity services improving and coming out of special measures. We've seen Im significant improvement in those who come to an end of their training. We know that therapy services operate access within the target of 14 weeks. So things have improved, but it is true to say that there is work to be done again. It's crucial that we consider the Ockenden reports in order to know what to go on with. First Minister, you have to forgive me, but I think that was a very complacent answer. It's very clear from the Ockenden report that the issues which were identified uh, when the uh, health board was put into special measures are not being uh, addressed. And I quote from the, one of the reasons that the health board was being put into special measures. The health board must implement, must implement uh, governance and assurance actions which have been highlighted in a series of reports including the Wales Audit Office and Healthcare Inspectorate Wales and a review carried out by Anne Lloyd. The Don Ockenden report makes it absolutely clear that those things have not been fully implemented and yet the man who's responsible for the oversight and accountability arrangements of these special measures who sat on the, your front row in your cabinet around that cabinet table who is responsible for the failure is still in his post. Don't you agree with me that there needs to be an apology from the Cabinet Secretary to the people of North Wales and to the families of the towel van patients who were failed by uh, your government in terms of turning this situation around? And will you accept that given that we don't have any confidence in your Health uh, Secretary to turn the situation around, that he ought to go and go now? Oh dear, oh dear. Is he standing for the leadership as well? I mean, really. We have a report that was published last week. We've not had a chance to respond to it yet. And apart from the, according to the Conservative Party, these responses can come within a few days. It's a 500-page report. I wonder if they actually yeah, the read report. the report. There are 50 pages of an executive summary, and it is right to say that the no Cabinet apology. Secretary will need to respond to that report, which he will do this afternoon. This is all about improving patient experience, not about scoring political points. Michelle Brown. Thank you, Presiding Officer. First Minister, what lessons have you learned over the years since the creation of the Betsy Cadwallader University Health Board? Well, because uh, we know that there were enormous problems in the health board, those problems are not yet resolved, uh, and that has to be accepted. There has been some progress, but its reports, such as Ockenden, that provide us with the ability to identify the challenges more closely and ensure the health board then meets those challenges. Question six, Question six, Dyloid. Thank you, Llywydd. Will the First Minister make a statement on the provision of nighttime domiciliary care? Local authorities are responsible for assessing an individual's needs for care and support, including any nighttime domiciliary care required, and for subsequently meeting those needs through a care and support plan. Thank you very much for that response. We out some important work in analysing the provision, or rather the lack of provision, of nighttime domiciliary care in Wales. Unfortunately, only eight out of the 22 local authorities actually provided figures in terms of the number of adults receiving nighttime domiciliary care. Of those local authorities that could provide figures, we know that only 1.92% of care and support assessments led to nighttime domiciliary care. Under 2% of assessments led to nighttime domiciliary care with wide variations between local authorities. So, what, therefore, is your government? going to do to tackle the lack of data collection in the first place and, more importantly, the lack of consistency and provision in terms of nighttime support to our most vulnerable citizens. Well, we've already taken action to improve the terms and conditions of the workforce. We've provided £19 million of recurrent funding to local authorities for them to work with providers to further support the workforce. Uh, we're aware that a number of authorities use part of that funding to pay a higher rate for sleep-in uh, cover. Uh, we will, of course, continue to work uh, using, uh, for example, the Social Services and Wellbeing Act with the local authorities uh, in order to uh, make sure the local authorities understand their uh, duties and to create greater uh, consistency. It's very difficult, of course, to understand uh, on an individual basis whether somebody is, uh, it, it has, been, it, it has been assessed or not for, uh, for, for nighttime domiciliary care, but it's hugely important that local authorities are flexible enough in their interpretation of the regulations and in their assessments to make sure that people get the care that they need. Susie Dibbs. 
Uh, deal, Llywydd. Well, I think those figures just highlight the critical role of unpaid carers in overnight care for uh, people within their family, usually. Um, uh, obviously, in those circumstances, it's very often mental health care and a traditional domiciliary care is, is not appropriate anyway. Um, you'll remember that the Welsh Conservatives launched a, a policy last, year, uh, last month to give grants to young adult carers to help them stay in education post-16, partly on the basis that it needed to be recognised that carers' allowance should be payable um, to, to those individuals, taking into account their overnight caring responsibilities as part of their hours for, uh, for eligibility. Can you give us some steer on whether this policy is going to be considered by the advisory body that's supporting the minister, uh, who's uh, at the moment trying to get together some policies to support carers? Well, uh, there is no, uh, there's nothing that is not on the table as far as uh, future policies are concerned. There is the question, of course, of uh, identifying the resources in order to, to do that. But also, we do have the education maintenance allowance uh, in, uh, in Wales, which I suspect would apply to uh, potentially to, uh, to, to many uh, carers. Uh, but of course, if there are other proposals that come forward, we will, of course, look at them. Question Scythe, jo Question Sam, Joyce Watson. Will the First Minister make a statement on the accessibility of children's play areas? Well, all children benefit from being outside, interacting with their environment and developing through play. Uh, statutory guidance directs local authorities working with partners to consider the diverse needs of all children and young people in their area. Uh, thank you, First Minister, but I'm sure that anyone uh, would be moved uh, by the story that broke last week of an eight-year-old boy, Kobe Barrow, who helped design a park which could be used by both able-bodied and disabled children. And he did that in memory of his best friend, Rihanna, who sadly passed away in 2016. It emerged that Rihanna had to travel for three hours from her home to play in a playground that had suitable equipment. And he wanted to rectify that for the other children who lived more locally. Uh, First Minister, what steps are the Welsh Government taking to ensure that playgrounds in Wales have inclusive play equipment for children? And how are we going to monitor progress of that throughout Wales? Well, the statutory guidance directs local authorities to consider the diverse needs of all children and young people in their area, including those with disabilities. I know that in April, uh, the Minister for Children, Older People and Social Care visited Oakland's play area in RCT, which is a good example of an accessible play area. It shows what can be achieved. In May, local authorities were reminded of the expectation for each local authority to develop a clearly identified play section on their websites. That information should be made available in a way that supports children and families to know what's available in their local areas. It should also include actions that local authorities propose to take to achieve sufficiency and improve inclusive play opportunities. Uh, I can also say that the Grown of Wales a SNAP Cymru Sustainable Play Project trained play workers in disability awareness and inclusion, and that was extremely successful in engaging disabled people in outdoor play. Angela Burns. Thank you, Presiding Officer. But of course, you hit on the word play, um, and you said that everybody should have access to be able to play, especially young children. We talk in this place a lot about obesity, about making our kids healthy and fit and active and all the rest of it. And yet, First Minister, what I'd be interested to know is what is your government doing, your government, the one here in Wales, doing to ensure that the planning system in Wales takes due regard of the necessity to have safe, accessible play areas close to homes that are currently being built? Because too many times you get to a situation where the developer will actually um, perhaps do, th through the use of a 106 agreement or something, will put aside an area for a play area, but it happens to be the other side of a busy main road, or it happens to be the other side of the village, where kids can't access it. In the old days, we used to put our play areas near our houses so that the parent at home or the carer could look out and just check the kid was still safe and out there playing. We can't do this now, and I've seen planners use the pavement, the green grass by the sides of pavements, as part of the square footage to add to the so-called playing area available in a housing development. How can we stop that? How can we make safe play areas that small kids can access all the time, where people can watch them and know that they are truly, truly protected? Well, an effective planning authority will do just that. Uh, I've seen it happen in my own uh, authority, where play areas are accessible on new uh, housing estates and very accessible. So there's no reason why that can't be emulated by authorities elsewhere. 
uh, through the use of Section 106 agreements and through the use of planners, um, ensuring that play areas are available for uh, new residents on new uh, development. So there is a responsibility on local authorities and their planners to make sure that they follow the best practice that I've seen elsewhere in Wales. Question 8, Lee Waters. Question eight, Lee Waters. What do the Welsh Government have to introduce a default 20 mile an hour speed limit in urban areas? We have carried a comprehensive review of speed limits near schools on or near trunk roads, and we have a multi-year programme to introduce part-time 20 mile per hour limits in those locations. We also provide funding for local authorities to implement 20 mile per hour zones and limits through the Road Safety and Safe Routes in Communities grants. We have also commissioned Dr Adrian Davis to carry out an evidence review on the 20 mile an hour limits to inform any future policy development. That review will be concluded in August and that will show us uh, what the direction forward will be. Thank you, First Minister, because two years ago Public Health Wales did produce some research which showed that the default 20 mile an hour speed limit would result in a reduction in road traffic casualties, a reduction in carbon and nitrogen oxide emissions in residential areas, a decrease in noise, an increase in active travel, community cohesion and more spending in local shops. But put simply, it would achieve all the national goals set out in the Wellbeing in Future Generations Act. Now, having said that we would introduced 20 mile an hour zones once we had the powers, now we have the powers, it does seem that we are waiting for the Department of Transport in London to complete some further research uh, before, we, uh, before we go ahead. But wouldn't the First Minister agree that the evidence is clear and consistent and we should now get on with it. Well, I mean, let's, let's wait to see what the review uh, says. We're, we're not dependent on what the DFT does, uh, for obvious uh, reasons. What their work is of interest to us, of course, but we have our own review. Once that's published, then, of course, further decisions can be taken as to uh, then whether or not we introduce a comprehensive 20 mile an hour limit. David Melding. First Minister, this, this has been examined, reviewed <coughs> endlessly across Europe, and uh, very many countries now have... Uh, uh, a, a 20 mile an hour uh, a limit or 30 kilometres in, uh, uh, in their measures. Uh, can I commend Cardiff Council for just getting on with this? And I welcome the local campaigns that are now pushing us, like the one in Sully. It should be default, and the motorist should not be king in terms of who can go out and enjoy the outside environment. When we drive cars, we have to be responsible for that, and the pedestrian needs greater protection, and we need to shift to more active forms of travel. It's impossible to argue with him when he puts it that way. Uh, and he is right to say uh, that active consideration will be given to a 20 mile per hour speed limit. He's also right to say that we want to encourage more people to other forms of transport. And that's precisely, as I've outlined earlier on this afternoon, what we're looking to do. Simon Thomas. Uh, well, done, to do the plan. well, this is a third party getting up to support 20 miles per hour as the default in our towns and villages. When I went to primary school, 90% of children walk back and forth to primary schools alone. Now only 25% travel to school, to primary school in that way. That's because the car has come to dominate our urban landscape in a way that isn't natural and doesn't allow natural play or health. So will you at least empower local authorities now to introduce these zones without any barrier put in place by the Welsh Government? Well, we are providing funding to local authorities to ensure that there are 20 miles per hour zones there already and people see them across Wales. It's not a legal problem, but a financial one. They need to know that the funding is available and that's why there's a grant available to ensure that the zones can move forward. Thank you, First Minister. The next item...